you're an architect, 3D artist, or designer learning Unreal Engine 5, today's video is a guide to help you get started. I will show you how to prepare your projects and export your assets with DataMath, and then we'll take a look at Unreal Engine like a crash course. With that said, let's get started. The first step is downloading Unreal Engine. To do that, you need to download and install Epic Games Launcher. After you do that, we can go to Unreal Engine to the library and then click on this nice yellow plus button. It will add an engine version to your library here. When you click on the engine version you want to install and click on install, if you go to options and go to the target platforms, you will see platforms that you may or may not develop for. If you don't develop for Linux or iOS or Android, you can turn these off because these are about 10 gigabytes and the same across all your engine versions, all right? Six gigabytes for the Android, five for the iOS, and nine for Linux. If you turn these off, you will see that the engine size will go less than half. Disable the platforms that you don't develop for, then click on apply, then select a location and click on install. That's it. The second step is downloading DataMath Exporter. Think of DataMath as a collection of tools and plugins that you install on your tool of choice and it will translate your project to Unreal Engine. You can also think of it as a bridge between all DCC tools, digital content creation tools and beautiful Unreal Engine. Once you click on this page, we can scroll down and we can click on get the plugins. You will see that DataMath is supporting these apps. So we have 3ds Max, we have SketchUp, we have Rivet, Naviswork, and so on. We will be downloading 3ds Max exporter. So click download the exporter, install it. Pretty straightforward process. And once you do that, you're ready to export your projects. But before exporting our projects, let's take a look at Unreal Engine 5, get to know the basics, and talk a little bit about Lumen. So I'm going to click on Launch. We will be welcomed with Unreal Project Browser. Here we will see a list of our recent projects, and here we will see templates that we can start from our new projects. For example, if you don't want to start a VR project from scratch, you can use these templates that will save you so much time. And the same can be said for other industries. So in the automotive industry, we have a photo studio, we have product configurator. And of course, if you're working in architecture, we have all these templates. Now, these templates have some pre-enabled plugins and console commands. It's just an environment that is made for you to get things done faster. For the sake of today's tutorial, we will choose architecture, we will choose plank template, then we can set a location, give our project a name, creative name goes here, then let's click on create. When you click create, Unreal Editor will load, and if this is the first time ever you're creating a project, this might take some time. If not, then just like that, the engine will open for you. And this is what the engine looks like when you start it. So let's talk about what we are seeing here. You may get some notifications here. Let's click on dismiss for now. In the middle, we have our 3D viewport. Our 3D viewport is a window to the words we are creating in the engine. So if you right click, you can look around. And if you left click, you can move the camera forward and backward based on your hand movement. While you are right clicking to look around, we can press on ASDW to move around while we are looking around and we can press Q and E to move the camera up and down. When we release the mouse, if you press on ASDW again, nothing is going to happen. This is a behavior you can change from the editor preferences, but we're gonna leave this at its default settings. We can see here we have some actors. Here we have seven actors. And everything here in the level, we can see a list of these actors on the right, in a window called Outliner. This is our word Outliner. Everything is here, will be always here. So if you double click on an asset, it will focus that asset for you. Below that, we have the details panel. And from here, each asset or each actor we click on, we can access its settings. So if you click on a camera, we can access 
Camera settings. If you click on a static mesh, we can access static mesh settings and we can assign materials. And the same for this actor, sun and sky. We can set the latitude, the longitude, the time zone. On the tab here, we have our main toolbar. It's a collection of settings we use a lot. So we do save a lot. And from here, we can switch the editor modes. By default, we are in select mode. It's the mode where you can select stuff. The shortcut for that is Shift 1. And we have other modes for the engine landscape. So we can create landscapes. We have foliage. This is where we can paint trees, vegetation. We have mesh edit, modeling, and so on. Next, here we have our create menu. And from here, we can import content. We can use Quixel Bridge. It's fully integrated with Unreal Engine 5 now. And the best part, you can click this menu and put it wherever you like. I love the new updates on Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so we were talking about this menu. Then we have lights, shapes, cameras, visual effects like the post-process volume, the sky atmosphere, the clouds. All these actors, we can add them from here. Next to that, we have the blueprints, we have cinematics, we have the options to play our game and to simulate our game on other consoles. Now, we have another panel. I love that it's hidden by default, meaning we have more space to work with by default. In the early versions of Unreal Engine, we used to have the content browser here. To open the content browser, we can click on this button to open it, or we can press Ctrl space to also open it. And if you want to dock this here, you can click dock in layout. And now this is docked here, but we have a smaller area to work with. So I'm going to middle mouse button here to close this menu and press Ctrl space whenever I need this. If you have multiple monitors, it's possible to have multiple content browsers, word outliners, details panels, and we can access all these extra menus from the window tab. So if you go to window, we have cinematics, we have content browser, we have the viewports, we have details panels, we have many windows that we're going to discuss when we need them, especially this guy, the environment light mixer. We spoke about the 3D viewport and everything we see. With that said, let's close this. Let's open our project in 3ds Max and export it to the engine. All right, so here we are in 3ds Max. As much as I'd love to just click export and send this to Unreal Engine, that is not possible because we need to prepare our project. And what do you mean by preparing your project, Yahya? By preparing our project, organizing that project into layers, giving proper naming conventions to the meshes, and of course, detaching your meshes. So when you have a project with walls, floors, ceilings, and all of them are attached together. Light baking will not work. Lumen will not work as intended. To fix this, to be able to export this to Unreal or any game engine, we need to detach our meshes. On this mesh here, if we click on layers, click on this mesh, at the moment it's just one mesh. And if we detach this mesh here, all of the meshes we're going to detach will be listed in the same layer. I would add this to a new layer and call it walls. And let's select this mesh and let's go to edit mode. I will select the upper part of the ceiling. So I will select this part, then deselect this part, detach this, isolate my selection so I can see better. And I will do the same for the floor. So I'm going to select the lower part and select this. Then press D on my keyboard to detach the floor. Then I will isolate my selection again. And I will select these parts of the ceiling and also detach them. So I will select an option here to make my selection easier by angle. Enable this and click on one of these faces. And it will select the whole ceiling for me for this room. I will leave this separate. Click detach. And I will detach this. Same here. The same here and here. Ideally, you want to keep meshes detached from each other by 90 degrees. So I will select this part now. We have the walls. I will disable my angle snap uh, selection. And then I will select these walls separately, one by one, and detach them. 
So here is one, here is two, here is three, here is four. Detach these, isolate my selection, detach this. I will select this whole wall piece. It's recommended that we keep things continuous, so not detaching this half of the wall and having this separate. So if we are going to bake the lights, and you might, so just do that probably from 3S Max or your tool of choice, and don't leave planar faces like this separated. What I mean is, don't do this. So what I do recommend in doing in this case is selecting this whole wall from start to finish, this whole face, detach it and keep going. Also, you don't want your project to be a million piece. So that is something also to keep in mind. As you can see here, I'm trying to keep the meshes around the same size. Of course, to make the detach process faster for me, I have a shortcut that when I click, it just I get detach instead of going somewhere here, find detach and clicking on it. So now if you go to the layer we made called wall and double click this layer, this is the whole project. It needs a better naming. So let's select the walls. So here are the walls. Click rename S underscore s stands for static mesh then give it another underscore then we can check on numbered and start with the base number at one and then when we click rename it will name all the meshes for us as intended so now we can select these meshes select the ceiling s underscore ceiling rename and the same for the floor click rename. I will hide this layer for now so we can see what is inside the project. So let's put that here. We have the floor mesh here. We can select each room also and detach it. Basically, let me do this. So selecting these parts, make sure to select everything. There we go. The same can be done on the skirt boards. So I'm going to add this to a new layer call it skirt board and then select this element and start detaching the rooms. So here we have this part, we have this part. So selecting these skirt boards and detaching them, keeping them around the same size. There are rooms that I know we will not get into. So I'm selecting multiple like this. It's okay. And there we go. So now let's select all the skirt board meshes. We detached and we can call it, give it a name, S Scared Board. Select this window here, select these parts, detach them. I think this looks good. We detached enough. The next step is exporting our project. So exporting the whole project with one click with data math. It's possible, but I don't recommend doing that. Let's say you are working on this project, you export it to the engine and then the customer or the boss or whoever working with you on this project want to do some modifications. Let's say you modified the walls or modified whatever elements in this project. Imagine once every time you do a change, you have to export all the project again. The way I export my projects is based on what is static, what will not change based on of course, each project and what could change a lot. I separate these from each other. So for example, I usually have a couple of data math exports, one for the architectural elements, the other for the furniture, and the third could be for small stuff like small assets, small props, and so on. And of course, this will make it easier and faster to import, export, re-import all of our meshes. So. The way I would export this, I would select everything architectural first. So I will add the walls and I will add the other walls from the project. So these are the windows technically. Let's call them uh, windows here. Wins for now, windows. And we can have the skirt board. 
we can have the environment it's okay there's a couple of planes actually yeah so these are the architectural elements of the project and i can go now we can go to file export i usually have a data math folder underscore temp this is where i export my data math files and i delete them every now and then because they get bigger you're exporting meshes textures animations so they take some space i put them in temp folder here i will make a new folder for this call it 007 this is a scene from evermotion so we can give it the same name 007 walls click ok and data math will export it will do its job now once we exported our wall meshes we can hide them so we can hide the windows the walls and the skirt boards then unhide everything i don't want the sun let's go here and here our furniture and meshes so i can select the furniture first and see how many assets we got here so we got these large pieces of the furniture of the house we can export them uh, as one piece so click export ah i forgot to change the export type from fpx to unreal data math so here we can select and call it furniture we can turn off the furniture and turn these layers on and call this walls select data math click save and i'm exporting visible objects you can export selected objects and just the current frame because we don't have an animation and finally we have the props now based on my experience with this project these props are so much we have four thousand four million polygons almost it takes so much time to import and export these props so when it comes to props like this i recommend exporting these props separately so for example you can export the curtains alone you can export the props of the outside area alone you can export the props of the hallway and the living room alone unless you're okay with waiting long times for the export and import and that's exactly what we're gonna do today so i'm gonna export this 007 call it props all right export is finished let's go to unreal engine now so i will go to the engine and here we are in the engine again i'm gonna press Control space to bring my content drawer and here under content folder i will right click and make a new folder I will call this underscore projects. This is how we work in VR division. We always have a main folder called underscore projects, underscore, so it's always on top, and projects, because here we put all of our ArchFizz projects and we stay consistent across all of our Unreal Engine projects. And this is important because when we take content or assets from folder to folder, we always have the same folder structure. I'm going to make a new folder here call it give it the name of my project so today is gonna call apt 007 for example and here we can make two new folders one called it data math and the other folder is maps click maps right click create new level here and call this main map or main map double click we come to the dark side this is a new level that is completely empty to start importing stuff Let's go to the menu here to quickly add to our project, select data math. So we can select our file, file import. And if you're using something like Revit or SketchUp, you can use the live link. That is something for another tutorial though. So let's go to our DT folder. And it is possible to select everything we exported, click open and import it. But for now, I'm gonna just select the walls and the furniture. And you can see like they have the file size compared with the props is massive. So let's select the walls and the furniture, click open. And it will ask us, hey, where do you want to save this? So we can tell it under projects, under my project name, under the folder data math. And we can click OK. Once we click OK, we will get a menu, data math import options. We can select what we want to import and what we want not to import. For this scenario, we're going to import the geometry and we're going also to import the materials and the textures. 
lights, cameras. Yes, let's import the cameras. And as for lights, I will uh, create them in Unreal Engine. For advanced, if we are going to bake our lights, we can keep the option generate light map UVs on. Let's click import. And let's wait. When you import a data math file, it will make a folder with the name of that data math file. And it will also add these scene actors to our scene. At the moment, we don't see anything because we are in let mode and there are no lights. So let's switch to unlet where we can see the scene with no lighting contribution. And here we can see this is our noise project. So if we open the furniture or the walls, we will see we have a data math scene actor. This one we can click and drag to our project. Like, and if you set it on 0, 0, 0, it will uh, go exactly where it should be when we exported that from Max. So everything goes exactly where it should be. And we don't want this. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z multiple times so we can get rid of that. We have a folder for textures. Here we have the textures for this or for the walls. And we have a folder for the materials and a folder for the geometry. And notice the geometry have the same name we gave it before we export. So we have the scared boards, we have the walls and the ceiling. Now, if the engine crashes and we didn't save, we will lose everything that has a star on it. This means the star here that this, is a, this asset is not saved or you've done some changes to it and you didn't save it yet. So you can press Ctrl S to save selected like so, or you can press Ctrl Shift S to save everything in your project. And if you go to file, you can see S, save current level, selected, and save all, Ctrl Shift S. So let's click here and wait. This is where the waiting actually begins. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so the wait is over. Let's uh, switch from unlit, still dark. Let's create our lights. To create our lights, we can go to the menu here. We can add our lights. So we need a directional light. We need a skylight and we also need a sky atmosphere and the volumetric cloud if you want. However, the easier way to create our lights is if we go to the window menu, then click on the environment light mixer, it will open a panel for us with the options to create the lights I just spoke about. It will create a skylight for us. Atmospheric light is our directional light. We have the option to create two of them, but one is enough. Sky atmosphere, volumetric cloud, and height fog. So let's click on create a skylight. Nothing technically happens because there is no sky to capture, but since it's the first option here, why not? Let's create a sunlight and let's create a sky atmosphere. Still don't see anything. Let's create height fog and let's close this menu. The reason we don't see anything, there are lights. The reason we don't see them is because something called the post-process volume and exposure settings. So. In 3ds Max, when we exported our project from here, if we click 8, we can go to the exposure control. We have V-Ray exposure control and we have these settings. These are also exported. And to find these, if we go to the project and type here in the search for post-process, we can see we have two post-process actors and these actors have some settings on the exposure and so on we can just get rid of them for now and create our own from scratch so we have two because we exported the data math files twice with each data math file for some reason we get one so that's something to keep an eye on what i do recommend in 3ds max before we export our project is actually to turn off the exposure control and then export your assets so you don't get confused on why it's way too dark. So let's select these two post-process volumes and get rid of them. Give it a few seconds to fix the auto exposure. And now you can see we have a sky, we have a sun and what we call the lower hemisphere here. This guy is the volumetric, is the exponential height fog. So if we disable this, you can see the lower hemisphere is completely black. You enable it. Okay, 
One final setting we need to enable, if we click on the skylight, let's make sure that real-time capture is set to enabled. And just like that, Lumen is actually working. So as Lumen is Unreal Engine 5, new, fully dynamic, global illumination and reflection system in Unreal. So as for the reflections now, these are Lumen reflections we see. And let's fix some materials. All right. Materials and the rest of the scene, let's talk about that. The first thing I want to get rid of before we start working on the materials is the post process volume or is the lens flare. And we can get rid of the lens flare from the post process volume. So if we type here in the search post process volume, we can go to the tab lens and under lens, we can find lens flare and we can set this to a nice zero. You may see there is like some fog in the scene. That's the exponential height fog we added. We need to reduce the value of that. So if we search for exponential height fog or just type expo, we can select the actor and we can set the fog density to 0 .0 0 0.002. So this is before you can see the effect and this is if we add one more zero okay the next thing you may have noticed that we have a door open we have a nice sun coming in however where is the sun here as far as i know or as far as i'm aware or at least at the time of making this video i'm not sure lumen is working as intended with translucent Faces, translucent objects. In fact, we just got the reflections on translucent faces within the last update. So, yeah, there is some weird stuff going on here. The fix for this, at least for now, is to make the windows or the glass does not cast shadow. However, if we select the glass mesh here and search for cast, so we can see the option cast shadow. If we disable this, we have uh, all of this now is not casting shadow and this is not what we want so we can go to the new modeling mode we can expand this a little so if this menu comes here i like it here on the left let's do expand this a little bit so under triangle model i can select triangle select and I can select these triangles, so without the need to click shift or anything, if you just click and, and drag the mouse, it will select faces for us. And I know we have four faces here for the windows, so if I select them, then we have an option hold here called Flood Fill. It will select everything connected to these faces, and then under Mesh Edits, we can click on Separate. Click Accept. Give it a couple of seconds. Now we can select these windows. And if for any reason you cannot select translucent surfaces, press T. T will toggle selection for translucent surfaces. And now we can select the windows. And now we can turn this off, casting shadows. And we have some nice little shadows coming. Well, not, not shadows, but you know what I mean. So that's one way to fix it. Okay, so here we have a flipped face. We can also fix that in the engine. So we can select this mesh select the triangles here we can do another flood fill and you can see we have the checker pattern this is a selection from this side meaning that we need to flip this phase we have flip normals if we click on this option now the normals are flipped and are working as intended so we can click accept all is looking good i will show you more settings in the post process volume so let's type post process volume and go for the settings we have here global illumination we discussed this slightly earlier we have lumen for the global illumination and for the reflections but what we didn't discuss is the settings we have here so if you want to increase the quality of lumen and the reflections you can go and do that from the post process volume if we click here we have lumen scene lighting quality, lumen scene detail, final gather quality. And I recommend playing with these settings and see how they will affect your project. But 
if you want to talk keep things simple or just quickly take a look at some of these settings if we select the final gather quality and make it as low as possible you can see now we have some sort of noise i'm not sure if you can see it but let's switch to lighting only you can see here so if we increase this or set it on its default value at one you can see it's much better uh, lighting we have here so increase this or decrease it and of course click on this burger menu show fps we can see how many frames per second we're getting and if we increase this we're getting less frames but much better quality and the same on these guys let me show you what the project looks like finished so this is the same project the exact same project with materials that are fixed there are almost no metallic surfaces except for the surfaces that are metallic of course you can see the extra assets we have not seen the props and i did the same trick on the windows here so if we click on the window we go to cast cast shadow it's not casting shadow so we have this light effect and i have just a couple of extra things so i think the first thing you have noticed is the plain image i have here this one is also from Overmotion. it's possible to use emissive surfaces to light our scenes so here's a previous version of the map where i have for example if i hide this object you can see the lighting completely changed so it's possible to use emissive surfaces to light our project and I press Ctrl Z to enable that again. All right, so here we go. Amazing. So hide this. Unhide it. Let's go to the map I made for this tutorial. How did I light this? If you're wondering, like, hey, I want the same lighting here. Easy. So I created additional lights that I placed on the windows. So I have these lights on my windows. I have two here and two here as well. And I have these uh, maps that are emissive. They look nice from the inside. They give you like this effect of there is something outside. Of course, you can replace these with Quixel assets. And I also have a directional light and a skylight and the sky atmosphere all of this is 100 percent fully dynamic no light bake can you imagine i hope you found this tutorial useful if you do if you did leave a like subscribe let me know what you want to see next tell me what you think about lumen how did you find lumen so far in your projects Thank you so much for watching. This was Yahya from VR Division. It's good to see you again, and I will see you soon.